Hello and welcome. I think this is a long overdue topic, which we're going to cover today. And this is about uh, snap rotation in virtual reality with room scale support. Okay, let's start with uh, you know, covering a bit of the theory. Basically, if you look at the standard VR template uh, and you look at the pawn hierarchy, you will see that uh, there is a default uh, scene root that we're you know, everything is then connected to. Then there is a VR origin, which is needed in order to handle the shift in VR. And parented to it, you have a camera, which will correspond later then to the uh, HMD, the head mounted display as soon as you play. And you have the two motion controllers, okay? So what happens is if you move uh, the pawn as an actor, within the world, what you're actually doing is moving the default scene root. The VR origin uh, and the motion controllers, as well as the HMD, will follow along. Now, what happens if, instead of you know, moving the pawn around, this is what you do within a real, you move in real life. So you're wearing your um, you know, HMD and you physically move throughout the room with your legs, okay? So what happens is that uh, the HMD, so the HMD component, the camera component, and the motion controllers will move along. So you see that your hands, for example, are following you. But when it comes to the pawn, the default scene root and the VR origin are not moving because they are you know, not linked to the HMD and to the controller is actually the other way around. The HMDs and the controllers are linked to the default scene root and to the VR origin root and VR origin, so they are parented to it. Now this uh, uh, causes an issue when it comes to rotations. Okay, so it will work as long as you translate, but when you are rotating, this creates a problem. Now to understand, you know, where that problem comes from. Um, if you look at these two images, when you give to the pawn the command to rotate, uh, basically what happens is that the rotation uses the root of the pawn as a pivot point. So everything rotates around the root of the pawn, but the root of the pawn, if you moved in real life, is not where you should be rotating around your expectation is to be rotating around the head mount display, which is the location where you are in real life, right? And as well as in VR. So this problem is perceived by user as a you know, wrong rotation. So it looks like you're orbiting you know, around the center of rotation, which is not your head mount display. So how do we fix it? Well, the way to fix it is you still rotate the pawn, of course, but you don't just rotate it. What you do is you roto translate it. So basically we have to devise a movement for the pawn itself, which we can apply to the root of the pawn, which has as a consequence the fact that actually the pawn rotates around the current location of the HMD. So from the HND standpoint, it feels like you are rotating in place, but actually the root of the pawn is rotating and translating. So basically it's orbiting around the current location, the HMD. So from a user's perspective, from a VR user perspective, you feel you experience the right rotation because you are rotating around the current location of the HMD, regardless of where you are into the play area. Okay, so how do we achieve this? Well, basically, uh, what happens is uh, you know, we have a sequence of uh, transformations that we have to apply. So transformation number one, we basically take the uh, transform of the HND, so the current transform of the HND, and we invert it. Then we apply it, that's point number two, we apply it to uh, the pawn, and as a consequence, the HMD location is now in the origin. So you will not see this. So this all happens with the transform. So you are not experiencing this as a user. It's just what happens, uh, you know, from a math standpoint, the calculations that we're going to do. Okay. So now the HMD is in the origin. 
Now we can apply a rotation and basically rotate the root of the pawn around the origin, which is where we translated the H and D. And last but not least, we apply the reverse translation. So basically we bring back the H and D to its original location. As a consequence, the pawn will find itself in a rotated location. And if you check the drawings, you will see that the pawn is actually orbited around the HMD, right? Which is exactly what we want. And the HMD at the same time has pivoted on itself. So this is the outcome of uh, this process and all the calculations. So how does this work from a blueprint standpoint? Now it's very simple. So as said, we take the camera, which corresponds its lock to the HMD. We take its word transform. Then we break the transform so that we use only the location of the camera and the rotation around the vertical axis, so the your rotation. Reason is that you know we don't want to rotate around an axis which also has a pitch uh, or a roll inclination, so those with zero here. And then we take uh, the amended transform and we invert it and we start then to compose it. So first we compose the actor transform, the pawn transform, with the inventor transform of the camera, so the HMD, and this will take the camera to the origin. Then we apply the second rotation, and as you can see this is a rotation which derives directly from uh, the input, and basically we have implemented here a snap rotation, so every time that the thumbstick is displaced from the center position to the side, we apply a 30 degrees um, rotation. And then as you let go, it is being reset and kept in place. And then again, you can apply another 30 degree, another 30 degree, another 30 degree. So this mechanism prevents that, you know, if we keep the stick on the side, we're going to rotate continuously, which is very sickening in VR. Once we have done that, so we have applied now the rotation according to the input from the stamp stick, uh, we take the original transform and we you know, reapply so that we are bringing back the HMD into the original location. And finally, this is what we are using to uh, do a sect actor transform. Okay, so this is moving the pawn in the new location uh, with a rotation applied, and that's what represents at the end the rotor translation. Okay. So let's uh, um, check it out directly in VR. Okay, so let's start the project uh, with uh, the standard VR template. I'm going to use uh, for 24 in this case. Okay, let's create a new project games using the virtual reality template you can leave all default settings and let's call it VR snapter RS as room scale okay as usual let's move to the motion controller map okay and Let's click on the pawn, so this is the standard VR pawn. And uh, respect to what I showed in the presentation, it doesn't have the motion controllers because these are spawned at runtime, but it doesn't make any difference for us. So what we want to do is scroll down to um, the teleport session. So this one we want to uh, completely disable because we want to use the thumbstick for different reason so we have to completely deactivate it and now if we go into the project settings where the inputs are let's have a look at what is available so under axis mapping we have access to the thumbsticks of the motion controller okay so what we're gonna do is uh, basically implement the the snap turn on, it can be on the left or it can be on the right, uh, depending. So I think that uh, uh, we're going to use the right thumbstick for moving around. So let's use the left one and specifically the X axis 
to control uh, the snap rotation. Okay. So motion controller thumb left underscore X. So back into the phone. Let's give us a bit of room and start down here. So thumb motion controller axis event motion controller thumb left X. So this is what we want to use. Okay. Now let's first check that the thumb stick has been offset uh, of a certain amount from the center. So let's use, for example, uh, 0 0.8. I think it's a fair amount to say, okay, if it's been really offset, you know, to the side, almost to the side, then we can activate the snap turn and basically Then next, uh, let's uh, um, make sure that we do this only once. And if actually it's false, so if the thumb stick is back into basically the center location or it's been uh, you know, partially released, uh, then we reset the, the once. It means that we can do the next uh, snap rotation. Okay. What we also do with the value of the um, axis from the thumb stick, uh, basically we take its sign and uh, from there we build a rotator. So the easiest way is to basically multiply by a rotator using scale rotator and we're going to use a snap angle and of course you can personalize it but they say that we're using a snap angle of uh, 30 degrees okay so let's leave it here for the moment now what we have to do as we said earlier is we take the transform of the camera so let's try the camera in zoom a bit good so get word transform so this is the current transform of the camera and if you you know will move in real life this transform will so transform will also change to follow you okay so let's break this transform because remember that we want to fully use the location but when it comes to the rotation so we split uh, the pin when it comes to the rotation we only want to use the u so let's make transform And using all the location, let's split also this pin, only the U, and of course we retain the scale, okay? So basically we have removed the roll and the pitch from this transform because we don't want to rotate around the slanted axis, it has to be a vertical axis, okay? This said, we invert this transform, and now we take the transform of the wool point so get actor transform and we use transform composition to combine these two transforms. So compose transforms. Okay, so this will apply basically you have to read this as the first one. So the actor transform is transformed by the second transform. So the invert transform of the H and D location. Okay. Now when this is done, again we have to use compose transforms because now it's the time to actually use the rotation that we had down here. And what we are going to do is drag this maybe up a bit. And from here, we are going to make a transform. But this transform will only have the rotation, so location and scale will both be as is, except that the scale, of course, is going to be 1, 1, 1. Okay, so we don't alter the original scale, and this transform, we compose it 
with the result of the previous one. And last but not least, again Compose Transform. This time we take the original transform, so not inverted because we are going to put the HMD back into place and we apply it to the result. So basically what comes out of here is what we need to apply to the pawn. So, so basically we can do set actor transform. And this is what we can apply directly to the pawn in order to rotate around the current HMD location in room scale. Okay, so this is uh, yeah pretty much it. Now we can and remember that we don't have uh, you know any time stick movement. If we want to also apply time stick movement, first of all, let's put a comment around here. So snap, turn, thirty degrees. Thirty degrees with room scale support. Okay. And again, if we want to also apply a movement using a thumbstick, so we can use the right axis. So motion controller. This is covered in a previous tutorial, but uh, thumbstick right X. Move this one motion controller. So we want the axis event, thumb right, and motion controller, thumb Y. Okay, so we do a add actor word offset. Perfect. And in this case, I think we can do a sweep. In the previous case, I think we could directly do a teleport, even though it's in place. So it doesn't matter for the HMD, but yeah, the pawn is um, teleported. And uh, uh, what we want to do is uh, take get actor, get actor right vector, multiplied by the axis. and feed it into that location. Now, if you want, that's an often asked question, a frequently asked question. If you want to increase the speed, what you can do is take the axis and multiply by a speed factor, okay? So promote the variable, let's call this speed factor. And if I want to move, compile, if I want to move, uh, uh, for example, double speed, I would use it too as a speed factor. Okay. Now let's do exactly the same for the other axis. It's exactly identical. The only thing that changes is uh, this time we are using not the right vector, but the get actor forward vector because with the y direction of the time stick we are moving uh, back and forth there might be a minus one factor that you should use here so we can uh, you know test it out if you find that you know by pressing the time stick forward you actually move backward then you will have to multiply this by minus one okay so this might happen with some controllers depending how they are rigged. Otherwise, just leave a one here and you're good to go. Okay, so this is the thumb stick movement. And I think we're good to go and uh, we can try it out. Now for a change, I'm testing this in the quest. So you see that I position myself on the T in the standard VR template. And now I'm going to do a, a snap turn. So you see that I'm rotating around the T. And now I move myself in real life. So a few steps to the right. 
until I am on the E and I will do a snap rotation again and as you can see we are rotating now around the E so exactly pivoting around our current location in real life um, let's do another test so I'm using the thumbsticks here to move around and I'm getting close to the table in MVR and now I'm taking a few steps to the left to move very close to the table and now doing a snap turn to face the table and as you can see this works really well of course the usual fun in VR just throwing the cubes around and one last tour of the room with our new snap rotation yeah that's it thanks for watching